Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a fig for you guys today. It's called Sweet Joy. And in my opinion, out of about 200 varieties, I've probably eaten somewhere around 200 varieties that I've tasted, um, grown in different parts of the country, grown in dry climates, grown in humid climates, grown in hot climates, cooler climates. Um, this is probably the most unique fig that I've ever tasted. And um, I think it's worth talking about. This is a variety that comes from Bass uh, at Trees of Joy. And he found it, I'm sure, somewhere in the Middle East and he brought it back. And um, he named it after his daughter. His daughter, his name, her name is Joy. I've met her, his daughter, I've met his son, I've met his wife, his family. They're such nice people. I've been to his house a number of times for Bass's gathering every June. And um, this is just a wonderful fig. I, I can see why he calls it Sweet Joy because it's quite sweet. It's more of a honey fig. But I've been noticing with this fig is that it really would do quite well, I think, in a, a very dry and, and, um, and warm climate. Kind of like the Middle East, you know, kind of like California or Southern California uh, or Arizona. It doesn't require pollination, of course. Um, and what I, why I think it would do better in those areas is that, not that it doesn't do well here, it's just that this fig in the beginning of my season was really subject to temperature swings. And these big temperature swings we get in the fall, we even get them in the spring. But around September 15th, we start to get really big jumps in temperature where we could be maybe like 70 at night and then go down to 50 at night. Um, and it's a pretty wild swing and that swing of temperature, maybe it has something to do with the atmospheric pressure as well. It creates this, this uh, splitting issue here, but not necessarily a splitting issue because you could say splitting's at the eye. That fig, Sweet Joy, doesn't split at the eye. It more splits along the side, as you see here. See that little, and then you can see the bottom here. I'll take this off, actually, because it came off anyway. You can see at the bottom here, it's not split, but on the side it is. And that happens quite a bit, it seems like, with Sweet Joy. However, you can look at this variety. This is called Red Libya. And this thing's doing absolutely nothing right now. It's barely ripening figs of very horrible quality because we've gotten so much rain recently. Um, also, the nighttime temperatures, while they've been consistent for the most part, they've been really cool but because it's been so cool and rainy i was expecting this fig not to do all that well and sweet joy has come through very surprisingly i found a, a sweet joy on the ground i didn't even realize it was there it was so well ripened um, although by the time i found it some things had gotten to it some insects had gotten to it but you could tell that it was pretty much dried up on the tree it did really well um, this fall, it's been doing incredibly, it, you know, sometime around September 15th and early September, I think is when this thing started for me. Even though we gave it a greenhouse head start, uh, and it was actually one of the earliest figs, should have been, that I had pinched. So, um, it should have produced a lot earlier for me. And I think last year it was quite late, if I'm not mistaken. I don't really know when this fig's gonna ripen, but I'll tell you this. It's quite different from now, now that we're at the end of October. I mean, we're like six days away from our, our first frost. It's very different now from when this thing was first ripening. In fact, the color is very different. This is a purple fig. I don't understand why, because the figs that I've gotten off of this tree in the past, other than the last like two of them, or th maybe three of them that I've been getting, is that they've been a very interesting beautiful gray color in that it's like green it's not even yellow it's like a green gray color that's so beautiful it's one of the more beautiful figs i have i'm going to be honest with you um but for some reason now it's so dark and i think it maybe has something to do with the temperatures just that we're getting cooler nights things are changing color man they're not the same we also have different day lengths here you know, our day length right now is equivalent to like the beginning of March. So we really don't have much uh, 
much day length. We don't have much sunlight. I don't know, I guess that's why. But still, all in all, very beautiful. And there's no cracking that I was showing you guys. There's none of that splitting down the side. In fact, there's no cracking at all. Not even a little small crack. So I think the tree is maturing. And my guess is that not only is it maturing, but it's just, it just takes a while for this to happen. I've had this tree, I think for like three years now, but before I got it, it was a very old tree. Um, I had gotten this from a friend who was neglecting his trees, couldn't take care of them anymore because of a, a divorce. And you can see down here just how thick this is. This is really old wood. This is probably like five years old if I had to guess this tree. I grafted a number of varieties onto it like uh, Strawberry Verte and um, two varieties here that have been dropping for me every year. You can see the main variety back over here, which is we left a branch of this on here to kind of take over and that's actually what it's done. It's really taken over the vigor and suppressed the, the lower growth down on the tree, which is, which is really not good. And, uh, it didn't end up working out too well with how this Franken fig worked out, but I'm probably going to get rid of the two varieties that are dropping air layer off strawberry verte because I really love this fig and then have a, a separate tree of strawberry verte and then kind of recover sweet joy because of how much I really like sweet joy um, and how much I've been impressed with it. Again, it's really the most unique fig I have. I wouldn't say it's the most flavorful, but the one that I had talked about that dropped on the ground that looked dried up and had, it had a really interesting pulp color to it. I've never seen a, a color like that in a pulp before. You could tell it had a very interesting flavor. It already has an interesting flavor to begin with if we're being totally honest with you guys. Um, it doesn't even need to be dried up. I think this is gonna be enough here to get some of that weird color. It really does have a weird pulp. It's almost like uh, a strange yellow or white color. And then in the middle, it starts to get like red. And people could say that this is a honey fig. And if you were to compare this with, let's say, a Tato, it would be totally incorrect. I mean, this is so different than a standard honey fig that you would think of like like Dotato or Peter's Honey, something like that. You could tell there that's that yellow color that I was really talking about. Um, maybe it's more caramel color, brown color. So it's like brown on the inside. You can tell it probably needs more it probably needed a little bit more time but it's it's good the way it is i mean for this time of the year i can't really complain with what i'm getting um and then the inside here you can kind of see it you can't you can't really see it but i'm not even really showing it to you guys am i but uh you know somewhere around the middle here it starts to turn red and i saw one <clears throat> that was on the ground <clears throat> a couple days ago that was very red and that to me is a sign that it has obviously some really interesting flavors to it. I mean, it's obvious, right? Because pulp color determines the flavor and the, the weirder the pulp color is, the more weird the potential is, the, uh, the flavor can be weird. Um, so again, this is a very unique fig. Let's try it. Hopefully the skin isn't bitter because it's so cold out. Wow. So it's not as flavorful as it has, as it was like, you know, months ago, or even probably even like, uh, you know, three weeks ago, but it's still really good. And I've always noticed this about the skin. The skin on this variety is quite spicy almost a little bitter, but it's, it's certainly spicy. It has like a weird spiciness to it, which gives it another weird complexity. I've only really noticed that in a couple figs like LSU purple. Um, there's one more I'm kind of blanking on, but it's almost like a persimmon flavor, like that persimmon spiciness. And <clears throat> the inside's very similar to, so 
some sort of honey type flavor. But again, that honey type flavor, I, I, you never really taste this in anything else. It's just quite good. I guess it does remind me a little bit of LSU Purple in, in like general and total. But, um, <clears throat> you know, if I were to say, what does this really remind me of compared to anything else? It's really its own little fig. It's its own little separate category of fig that uh, I think a lot more people ought to look into and try it. And um, yeah, you know, just be patient with this one. I think it takes a few years, like I said. You know, I don't really know how hardy it is. I don't know how late it is, to be honest with you. I don't know. It seems to do quite well in the rain. Even if it does sort of split down the side, it seems that uh, the sugar content is high enough in this one so that it doesn't spoil very easily. The skin's also very rain resistant. It is split resistant. You just have to kind of figure out, and maybe it's a maturity thing with the fact that it does split down the side like I showed you guys over there with the red Libya. If I can solve that issue, I think I really, really like this fig and I might, I might even consider making copies of it. Um, but for now, I'm, I'm kind of content with just how weird it is and how unusual it is and keeping it just for that purpose. So anyway, guys, uh, that was Sweet Joy. I want to thank you guys for watching this one. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, everyone.